Okay, class, you ready to learn more about how we breathe? Okay, so the next slide, we're gonna really look at how we change the intrapulmonary pressure. So this is explained in this next few slides. Okay, so you change the intrapulmonary pressure by changing the space that surrounds the lung. Okay, so there's a couple basic principles that we have to understand about physics. Air, or oxygen CO2 air, flows from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure. Okay, so that's rule number one. Rule number two is Boyle's law, is that the pressure and the volume is inversely related. So the bigger the volume, the lower the pressure that the things inside are feeling. The smaller the volume, and with the same amount of stuff, the higher the pressure the, the things inside are feeling. Okay, so what is this volume we're talking about? This applies to everything, you know, balloons, bottles, but in our case, we're gonna be talking about chest volume and intrapleural pressure and how we inhale and exhale. So let's look at the first principle. If you wanna inhale, okay, if you wanna inhale, you have to make sure that the intrapulmonary pressure is lower than the atmospheric pressure. So if you are looking at this example here, if the intrapulmonary pressure, let's say, is 761, and then the atmospheric pressure, it's at 760. Well, this is higher than this pressure. So when the air flows, the air is gonna flow from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure, so the air flows out or exhale, okay? So that is the principle of pressure change. Okay, so then how do you change that intrapulmonary pressure to allow you to inhale and exhale? So let's first look at inhale. So in order to inhale, the intrapulmonary pressure must be lower, okay? So to make it lower, you have to make the chest volume bigger, okay? So the chest volume needs to be bigger. Well, how do you make it bigger? You make it bigger by pulling the diaphragm down and then puffing the chest out. So that's gonna increase the volume in here, okay? Oh, no, actually, sorry, let me go back. So you're gonna decrease the volume, excuse me. So you're gonna, no, you are, sorry. You are gonna increase the volume. I was looking at pressure. But because the space is not bigger, so you are increasing the volume, the space is bigger, now the pressure, right? Because the same space, but the same amount of stuff in a bigger space, now it's gonna have lower pressure. So if the pressure is lower than outside, then the air is gonna come in, okay? So to change the chest volume, you can do a few things, right? To puff out the chest and to pull down the diaphragm. So the diaphragm will contract, pull down. Just imagine, take a deep breath now. <gasps> You feel like your muscles contracting and your chest is puffing up. That's all contraction is gonna, so you're gonna move the diaphragm inferiorly, creating more space, and the intercostals contract and expand, okay? The chest. So that's the relationship we're looking at here. Okay, next one. I'll try to be a little bit more succinct on the next one. It's the same idea. So let's take a look at this one, right? Now we're gonna exhale. So in order to exhale, we already know that we want to decrease the chest volume. Well, then that's gonna increase the intrapulmonary pressure. And because that's higher, that's gonna push air. My lung pressure is higher, it's gonna push air out, okay? That's gonna lead to exhalation. So how do you do that? So in order to do that, you're gonna wanna make sure the chest will shrink. Take an exhale right now. Right, your shoulders even down, your chest is in, 
your diaphragm as in up, and then your diaphragm is going to relax, right? Does it feel more relaxing? You take a, this is a contraction. <sighs> that's a, a relaxation, okay? So that's going to now, relaxation is the diaphragm goes superior, relaxes back. So this is going to decrease the chest volume, but because it's decreased with the same amount of stuff inside, that's going to be a higher pressure. And because the pressure is higher, it's going to push air from the lungs out of the mouth. Okay, and you can practice by doing here and circling the correct answer and same thing here. You do want to practice some because there's a lot of inferior, superior, expand, shrinks, um, increase, decrease, greater than, less than. So you want to kind of get used to looking at it and sometimes drawing it out really help in your journal to, so that you can have a nice little um, chart. And this is really actually important when you look at ventilators. When you program a ventilator, you need to make sure you understand what kind of pressure you need to have to allow the patient to vent properly. Okay, so this is a uh, very important medically, especially even currently now when we talk about ventilators. And I also have this little, you, when, if we we're in lab, we would make this ourselves, but if you have these supplies at home, um, you can build this with your kids and make a little lung model. And the lung model allow you to simulate that if you pull something down, what happened to the volume and what happened to the pressure and then what happened to air movement. So that allows you to practice, okay? All right, um, we'll end with this video right here, but the next few videos, we're gonna talk about um, what happens when this goes wrong, okay? Uh, I'll see you soon.